those of you who don't know, recently I did a video about 15 features that I feel are a tiny bit unloved in Minecraft. I mean, some of them are a little bit outdated, some of them aren't particularly useful, and some of them, I would say, are a tiny bit on the silly side. Now, if you haven't seen that video before, I put a link to that one on the screen and also down in the description. But today, we're going to be doing the polar opposite. In this one, we're going to take a look at 15 features that I absolutely love about Minecraft. I think it should be fairly interesting, so let's crack on. Now, I think it's fairly obvious what feature number one is going to be. What feature do I love most in Minecraft, you say? I mean, looking around, there's quite a lot of redstone contraptions around us. Clearly, I've put a lot of time into one feature of Minecraft, and of course, that is redstone. Without redstone, I probably wouldn't be playing Minecraft anymore, and I certainly wouldn't be making YouTube videos for you guys. So redstone is the number one feature for me. I absolutely love it. This next one is going to sound just a tiny bit strange, but I remember way back in the day, this was as fast as you could move. I mean, you could use minecarts, that would allow you to travel a little bit faster, but they were a massive pain in the backside because we didn't have powered rails, so this was it. Maximum speed. Then Mojang added sprinting, and while that pretty much changed the game, you could finally move around nice and quickly, and you know what the best part is? People actually complained about that change, saying that it wasn't Minecrafty enough, which, looking back, it's just a tiny bit silly, isn't it? Generally speaking, because I make YouTube videos, the music in Minecraft is turned off, but have you ever just sat there and listened to how lovely the music is? It fits the game perfectly, it's absolutely ideal, and you know what, I could definitely jam out to this. At the risk of sounding like an old man for the second time in today's video, back in my day, this was the fastest that you could possibly mine. The diamond pickaxe was top notch, your friends would be jealous if you had one of these, but nowadays we have enchanting, and well, we've all seen the effects of that one. Efficiency 5 with a haste 2 beacon, and you can take off into the distance. I imagine that's how people with horses felt when the car first arrived. They were just completely gobsmacked by how speedy those things were. Enchanted books and the anvil. Now we can actually choose what enchantments we wanted on our pickaxe. So for example, we've got Unbreaking 3 right here and we can chuck Efficiency 5 on top of it. And there we go. We've got Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 5. And the best news is, is that we can also combine pickaxes and other tools to get even better things. Now the way that we used to have to do things was we went inside the crafting bench right here and we just put both tools in and then we got a completely normal pickaxe out. Honestly, I don't think that's a particularly fair trade. Those were two completely brand new Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 5 pickaxes, and this is what I get out of it. Seems a bit bizarre to me. Creative mode, the ability to fly, break blocks instantly, not take any damage from the environment around you, and most importantly, have access to every single block in the game. For example, back in the day, if I wanted to build a giant obsidian statue, I'd have to go out mining for three days to find all of the obsidian, then I'd have to come back and start constructing, and if I didn't like it, it would take another three days to take down. Now in creative mode, I just grab this, place it there, I can start chucking in the obsidian blocks, and yeah, I think that looks pretty nice, but oh, I've placed that block by mistake. It's all very simple. God, this is such a luxury. And on a similar note, the super flat wells. These things right here, where there is no terrain whatsoever and you've got all the space in the world to build as many things as you want. Can you imagine if my redstone testing world was built in a normal survival world? Yeah, it would actually look really cool. I mean, imagine all these redstone contraptions in that environment. That would look amazing. But most importantly, this is very easy to work in and you don't have to travel for miles trying to find a space big enough for the ridiculous project that you want to work on. In my opinion, the Elytra are good for two things, looking like Batman and flying places very quickly if you're actually skilled enough, which to be honest with you, I don't think I am. As you can see, I've got a punch two bow and I've got some arrows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off the edge and I'm going to try my best to demonstrate to you the infinite flying technique. And as you can see, yeah, it's not going well, is it? I mean, clearly, I am lacking quite a lot of talent right there. The idea is, is that you shoot yourself with the punch two bow and then you fly off into the distance, but well, I seem to be pretty terrible at it. One of the main things that Minecraft is famous for is its very quirky bugs. For example, this is the longest standing bug in Minecraft that has pretty much become a feature, the good old fashioned bud switch bug. I love it. It's enabled a lot of possibilities. In fact, I love all of the bugs in Minecraft, even when they kill me. The fact that you don't take any full damage when you land in water. Now, I know this isn't particularly realistic. I just did a nine meter jump into one meter's worth of water. My legs would be extremely broken at this point in time, but I can promise you that's better than the old system. It didn't used to be very consistent. You'd either take all of the full damage or none of the full damage whatsoever, and you'd only find out when you actually hit the water. I thought I'd quickly pop onto the Hermitcraft server with this one because villagers are brilliant. I mean, sure they have their flaws, okay? One of them is very audible at this point in time, but the fact that you can trade with these guys and actually get tons upon tons of items really very simply just using this villager trading hall is well worth the horrendous racket that they seem to make. 
Now I know for a lot of you the hopper is going to fall under the redstone umbrella but I'm going to take the hopper out of the redstone umbrella because I feel it deserves its own spot in today's video because the hopper completely changed the way people play Minecraft. Before this thing was introduced into the game what you used to do is you used to build a fully automatic farm then if you wanted the items from said fully automatic farm you would stand next to the fully automatic farm. So you've just built a brand new melon farm you'd stand next to it and then your inventory would fill up with melons and then you put those in a chest. Isn't it strange to think that that's how we used to do things? I mean, it was only four years ago that that was the case. Bizarre. This is another one that could be banded in with the redstone component list, but I'm going to give it its own slot because it's a slightly different style of redstone, and that is the command block. This thing right here is definitely one of the most powerful features of Minecraft. Now, I know I don't particularly use these very often on my YouTube channel. I don't make videos on command block contraptions, and I don't tend to play with them too much, but I definitely understand that these opened a lot of doors. I mean, have you seen some of the ridiculous things that are built using command blocks in Minecraft? Blow my mind. This one is definitely going to sound strange if you've watched my Hermitcraft series before, but the creeper. Believe it or not, the creeper is one of my favorite features of the game because it's something to genuinely be scared of. I actually get afraid when a creeper walks up to me because you know that there is a chance that the build that you've just spent hours on is about to be absolutely obliterated. That's the sort of fear that you don't generally get in games like this one. And finally, at the risk of sounding a little bit soppy and also just a tiny bit incorrect, the community. Now I know that the community isn't a direct feature of Minecraft, but it's definitely one of the main features of Minecraft that make it such a massive success. You guys are absolutely lovely, you're all sharing your builds, you're all showing off all of the things that you've been working on, or giving other people suggestions, or making your YouTube videos and things like that. Without the community, I feel like Minecraft wouldn't have been a success in the slightest, so it's really what makes Minecraft such a special game. Now one thing that I just want to say before I end this video is I've probably missed a few things that you absolutely love that I haven't featured in this video. So if you wouldn't mind heading down to the comment section and letting me know the things that you love about Minecraft because I'm sure that would be incredibly interesting. But unfortunately ladies and gents, that is all I've got time for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please just hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching guys. This has been Mambo and I'm out. I'll see you later.